In this module, we're going to talk about post-deployment considerations with Azure VMware Solution. So in the last module, we went through the full end-to-end -end demo of deploying the private cloud. Now what? Well, we'd like to talk through um, a set of considerations for what to do on the Azure side and what to do on the AVS and below side uh, to make the environment fully ready to support workloads. On the Azure side, uh, we want to make sure that we've implemented the right role-based access controls. We want to make sure that we're supporting the separation of concerns. So we want to limit access to that private cloud object uh, as it has the keys to the cloud admin credential and anyone with access to that object can log into vCenter. Um, but we don't want to restrict that too much because our, our vSphere admins may need access to that object to uh, perform administrative tasks through the Azure portal. There are some features that are only available through that portal. Um, today, those include um, creating placement policies, storage policies, um, configuring external identity sources, we'll get to some of those in a minute, um, and, and making changes to the DHCP and DNS services on the default uh, tier one gateway. For that, you need to have private cloud access. So if you're limiting your vSphere admins, they're not gonna be able to make those changes. We also wanna look at uh, cost controls, cost management. Um, we would recommend purchasing reserved instances. Uh, your AVS hosts are likely gonna persist. Um, paying on-demand pricing for them uh, usually won't make sense. And you may also wanna create some budgets and alerts to track spend. Um, you know you're paying a set cost per month for those hosts. So you probably wanna create a budget that is a little over that set cost so that you can see if there are any other resources being spun up in your, in your environment and track the costs associated with them. We also wanna look at resource consistency controls. Um, Azure policy gives you a, a way to set and enforce standards and assess compliance against those standards at scale. Um, you can do things like define what services are allowed to be used in what region, um, force a tagging strategy, uh, force monitoring configuration, um, alarm on expired keys, all kinds of things. You should also look at your, your tagging policy. Um, tagging is super useful to make sense of resources at scale. Uh, we use tags for things like resource management, uh, cost management and optimization, operations management, um, security governance, regulatory compliance, classification, support automation, and to support workload optimization. Uh, you can also use a thing called resource locks. Uh, this is a real quick thing that can prevent a very bad day. You can set a resource lock on the, res on the resource group that holds the AVS private cloud object, just to make sure that nobody can accidentally delete it. So in addition to the Azure considerations, we also need to think about the AVS and vSphere specific considerations. This includes configuring identity sources and role-based access control. How do we configure those identity sources? How do we provide different levels of access to our domain users and groups? Next, how do we prepare to host our VMs in the private cloud? There's a list of things that we need to do, such as configuring DHCP, DNS forwarding, and building network segments. Another important piece is configuring a content library, whether that's creating a new content library and uploading content like ISO images to it, or subscribing to an on-premises content library and pulling in your gold images and standard templates. Then lastly, integrating with management tools such as monitoring, logging, and backup. With vCenter Server inside of AVS, you get near full admin access by way of the cloud admin account. This is similar to the administrator account, but with a few less privileges. Because this is a managed service, you won't have access to manage the appliances, the vSphere clusters, ESXi hosts, or certain components within the vCenter itself. And you won't have access to the vCenter administrator account. The cloud admin account should be used for the initial setup and emergency purposes only, uh, but not day-to-day -day tasks. The cloud admin password is auto-generated when the private cloud is deployed, and you can access the credentials via the Azure portal. You can also change the cloud admin password via the Azure Cloud Shell. Configuring identity sources is critical. Today, we support Active Directory over LDAP with or without SSL, though we highly recommend using SSL. Your Active Directory can be on-premises or inside the AVS private cloud. And again, we recommend deploying an AD instance in the private cloud should there be a connectivity issue between the cloud and on-premises. AVS supports the ability to create custom roles with equal or lesser privileges to the cloud admin role. So once an identity source is configured, you can grant domain users and groups access to vCenter by adding them to those custom roles. When it comes to NSXT, you'll access NSX Manager using the local admin account. This account has full privileges to manage T0 and T1 gateways, network segments, and all the NSX services. Just like with vCenter, the use of the admin account should be limited as much as possible. Within the NSX Manager, you can add an identity source and make use of existing roles or create custom roles to assign domain users and groups to. The admin password is auto-generated during the private cloud deployment, but you cannot change the password via the Azure portal like you can with the cloud admin account. 
If you want to change the admin password, you'll need to open a support request. Virtual machine storage policies are key for data availability and performance. So you may or may not be familiar with storage policies. Hopefully most of you are. This is a big consideration with vSAN deployments. Storage policies apply to virtual machines in general, VMDKs, container persistent volumes, and they allow you to change the configuration to guarantee availability and performance of your VMs based on your application and business requirements. By default, we're initially set up with RAID 1 mirroring and failures to tolerate set to 1. And this requires a minimum of three hosts. You can see that as we start to build out our storage policies for different RAID configurations and to tolerate additional failures, uh, we'll then need to add additional hosts to the cluster. So if we go to RAID 5 or RAID 6, or we change the failures to tolerate, you can see the minimum host requirement goes up, and this is how we spread data across the hosts. We can assign these storage policies while we're deploying the virtual machine, while we're cloning the virtual machine, or while the virtual machine is migrating. You can't change the storage policy through traditional methods via the vSphere client, but instead we can use Azure run commands in the Azure portal to modify a policy for a virtual machine or even set a new default storage policy for the entire cluster. As we mentioned in the planning and design module earlier, there's a whole set of native Azure management and operations tools, and there's the VMware vRealize suite, now under the cloud management pillar of VMware cross-cloud services. We think that the choice of which ecosystem to invest in comes down to what are you trying to do? Um, if Azure is your cloud platform, full stop, and you expect to refactor workloads to embrace Azure native services, and you don't ever see your organization dabbling in other clouds, the Azure native management stack makes a ton of sense. If Azure is one cloud of many, give our new story some thought. Um, both approaches are valid. You need to think about which route is best for you. Uh, VMware is all about choice. We think vSphere is the best place to run workloads, but our management tools will support workloads everywhere. You see the same thing with our Tanzu family. We think our Kubernetes distribution is the best one out there, but our operator and developer tools will support all flavors, even managed cloud services. We're always going to have strong opinions, uh, but it's more important to us that you be successful and we be right. We want to meet you where you are and help get you to where you want to be. We'll be publishing some deeper dive write-ups and demos exploring both Azure Native and vRealize tools with AVS in the coming months. So to recap, uh, we suggest you build appropriate Azure controls uh, to make sure that you've got the appropriate guardrails around your Azure uh, infrastructure. Um, we went through some vSphere workload readiness considerations to make sure that the AVS environment is ready to accept production workloads. And we talked through an approach for thinking about multi-cloud management. Uh, do you want to base this on a single cloud provider or do you want to look at more cloud agnostic solutions? Uh, in our next module, we'll do a demo of Azure cost management.